I often open my leadership conferences by explaining the law of the lid because it helps people understand the value of leadership. If you can get a handle on this law, you will see the incredible impact of leadership on every aspect of life. So here it is. Leadership ability is the lid that determines a person's level of effectiveness. The lower an individual's ability to lead, the lower the lid on his potential. The higher the leadership, the greater the effectiveness. To give you an example, if your leadership rates an 8, then your effectiveness can never be greater than a 7. If your leadership is only a 4, then your effectiveness will be no higher than a 3. Your leadership ability, for better or for worse, always determines your effectiveness and the potential impact of your organization. Let me tell you a story that illustrates the law of the lid. In 1930, two young brothers named Dick and Maurice moved from New Hampshire to California in search of the American dream. They had just gotten out of high school and they saw few opportunities back home. They headed straight for Hollywood where they eventually found jobs in a movie studio. After a while, they opened a theater in Glendale, a town about five miles northeast of Hollywood. But despite all their efforts, they just couldn't make the business profitable. The brothers' desire for success was strong, so they kept looking for better business opportunities. In 1937, they finally struck on something that worked. They opened a small drive-in restaurant in Pasadena, located just east of Glendale. People in Southern California had become very dependent on their cars, and the culture was changing to accommodate that, including its businesses. Dick and Maurice's tiny drive-in restaurant was a great success, and in 1940, they decided to move the operation to San Bernardino, a working-class boom town 50 miles east of Los Angeles. They built a larger facility and expanded their menu from hot dogs and fries and shakes to include barbecued beef and pork sandwiches, hamburgers, and other items. Their business exploded. Annual sales reached 200000 and the brothers found themselves splitting 50000 in profits every year, a sum that put them in the town's financial elite. In 1948, their intuition told them that times were changing, and they made modifications in their restaurant business. They streamlined everything. They reduced their menu and focused on selling hamburgers. They reduced their cost and the prices they charged customers. And they also created what they called the speedy service system. Their kitchen became like an assembly line, where each person focused on service with speed. Their goal was to fill each customer's order in 30 seconds or less. And they succeeded. By the mid-1950s, annual revenue hit 350000 and by then Dick and Maurice split net profits of about $100,000 each year. Who were these brothers? Their names were Dick and Maurice McDonald. That's right, the founders of McDonald's Hamburgers. They had hit the American jackpot, and the rest, as they say, is history, right? Wrong. The McDonald brothers never went any farther because their weak leadership put a lid on their ability to succeed. It's true that the McDonald brothers were financially secure. Theirs was one of the most profitable restaurant enterprises in the country. Their genius was in customer service and kitchen organization. That talent led to the creation of a new system of food and beverage service. In fact, they were so widely known in food service circles that people started writing them and visiting from all over the country to learn more about their methods. At one point, they received as many as 300 calls and letters every month. That led them to an idea of marketing the McDonald's concept. It looked like a way to make money without having to open another restaurant themselves. In 1952, they got started, but their effort was a dismal failure. The reason was simple. They lacked the leadership necessary to make it effective. Dick and Maurice were good restaurant owners. They understood how to run a business, make their systems efficient, cut costs, and increase profits. They were efficient managers, but they were not leaders. Their thinking patterns clamped a lid down on what they could do and become. At the height of their success, Dick and Maurice found themselves smack dab against the law of the lid. Then in 1954, the brothers hooked up with a man named Ray Kroc, who was a leader. As soon as he visited the store, he had a vision for its potential. 
In his mind, he could see the restaurant going nationwide in hundreds of markets. He soon struck a deal with Dick and Maurice, and in 1955, he formed McDonald's System Incorporated, later called the McDonald's Corporation. Kroc immediately bought the rights to a franchise so that he could use it as a model and prototype to sell other franchises. Then he began to assemble a team and build an organization to make McDonald's a nationwide entity. And in 1961, for the sum of $2.7 million, Kroc bought the exclusive rights to McDonald's from the brothers and proceeded to turn it into an American institution and global entity. The lid in the life and leadership of Ray Kroc was obviously much higher than that of his predecessors. In the years that Dick and Maurice McDonald had attempted to franchise their food service system, they managed to sell the concept to just 15 buyers, only 10 of whom actually opened restaurants. On the other hand, the leadership lid in Ray Kroc's life was sky high. Between 1955 and 1959, Kroc succeeded in opening 100 restaurants. Four years after that, there were 500 McDonald's. Today, the company has opened more than 21,000 restaurants in no fewer than 100 countries. Leadership ability, or more specifically, the lack of leadership ability, was the lid on the McDonald brothers' effectiveness. I believe that success is within the reach of just about everyone. But I also believe that personal success without leadership ability brings only limited effectiveness. A person's impact is only a fraction of what it could be with good leadership. The higher you want to climb, the more you need leadership. The greater the impact you want to make, the greater your influence needs to be. Leadership ability is always the lid on personal and organizational effectiveness. If the leadership is strong, the lid is high. But if it's not, then the organization is limited. That's why in times of trouble, Organizations naturally look for new leadership. When the country is experiencing hard times, it elects a new president. When a company is losing money, it brings in a new CEO. When a church is floundering, it searches for a new senior pastor. When a sports team keeps losing, it looks for a new head coach. Wherever you look, you can find smart, talented, successful people who are able to go only so far because of the limitation of their leadership. For example, when Apple got started in the late 1970s, Steve Wozniak was the brains behind the Apple computer. His leadership lid was low, but that was not the case for his partner, Steve Jobs. His lid was so high that he built a world-class organization and gave it a nine-digit value. That's the impact of the law of the lid. A few years ago, I met Don Stevenson, the chairman of Global Hospitality Resources Incorporated of San Diego, California an international hospitality advisory and consulting firm. Over lunch, I asked him about his organization. Today, he primarily does consulting. But back then, his company took over the management of hotels and resorts that weren't doing well financially. They oversaw many excellent facilities, such as La Costa in Southern California. Don said that whenever his company came into an organization to take it over, they always started by doing two things. First, they trained all the staff to improve their level of service to the customers, and second, they fired the leader. When he told me that, I was at first surprised. You always fire him, I asked? Every time? That's right, he said. Every time. Don't you talk to the person first to check him out to see if he's a good leader, I said? No, he answered. If he'd been a good leader, the organization wouldn't be in the mess it's in. And I thought to myself, of course, it's the law of the lid. To reach the highest level of effectiveness, you have to raise the lid, one way or another. The good news is that getting rid of the leader isn't the only way. Just as I teach in conferences that there is a lid, I also teach that you can raise it. But that's the subject of a different law of leadership.